friends i welcome all of you to the presence of material lab of our department of mining engineering kls focus of technology belagavi today we are here to explain the five sets of experiments out of that the first one is tension test it is also called a simple tension test here we have a equipment for universal testing machine this is called a universal testing machine where the top frame is fixed and bottom frame is moved with the help of a hydraulic rotating unit these two knobs are used to control the amount of force of the system this test is conducted on mild steel specimen which is a ductile material and this is the shape of the specimen this has got the two ends with the two grippers that is nozzle has been done to increase the grippness of the two ends in the chucks and here we have to punch two marks which is called as gauge length and you have to measure the length between these two points which is called as initial length l i with the help of a vernier you have to measure the initial diameter also di this is the di and l i has to be noted down once the system is kept here the loading will start before that you have to start with the table like this and in this table you will be gradually increasing the load right from let's say 2 kN and corresponding change in length which is going to be the new length after the extension that has to be noted down and these are available on the monitor which is kept on this here there is a monitor where you can see the load as well as the change in length these two readings have to be continuously noted down for all the sensor readings Here, when you are going from two, four, six, eight like that, when you are completing, there is a point where you get the, without the application of the load, the specimen will start increasing. We call it as yield point load. This load has to be noted down again. Again, when you continue, we we'll get the last point, which is called the ultimate point, where the neck formation takes place here. The specimen will start undergoing. A reduction in its diameter, and this is called as neck formation. And as the load, when this ultimate load is continuously increased, the reduction in the diameter continuously increases, and at one particular point it fractures. That is called fracture point. And one has to note down after joining these two broken specimens, we have to note down the final length of between the gauge points, and you have to measure. This final diameter here you have to measure on the broken specimen. Okay. Afterwards, by taking all these readings, every time you have to go and calculate stress and strain on each reading. Please note here, our initial diameter di was 14 millimeter. From that, we calculate the initial area, pi by 4 di square. When you measure the initial gauge length, it is a 140 mm, and then you have to calculate all these things for every reading. Calculate stress, which is sigma in the part. The current load divided by the initial area. It's already in order for minutes. And the strain is being calculated with current change in length upon the original initial length. Then you have already noted on the yield point that is P yield upon the initial area only again. So you will get the yield stress. Similarly, ultimate stress sigma ultimate is calculated by the ratio of ultimate load upon initial area. Then we have to calculate percentage reduction in area. This is equal to E I initial area minus final area upon initial area into hundred. But since area is pi by four di square, we can convert directly expressively directly. Di square minus di square upon di square into hundred. Next we have to calculate increase in length, which is equal to final length minus initial. Upon initial into 100, and finally we have to assume a factor of safety of two, and you pick up any of the yield point load divided by factor of safety when you do that will give you working stress. This is how we have to calculate. Afterwards we have to come here and we have to plot with the help of a graph sheet. We have to plot all the stresses. Stress sigma has all the stresses have to be plotted on the vertical axis. 
all the strings have to be plotted on the horizontal axis. Then when all the points are joined, we will find a straight line up to this point. At the point of interest, a small kink is formed. Upper end point, lower end point. Then this graph continues like this. The highest point is called the ultimate stress. Then because of the reduction in the area, the curve goes down and at this point, the specimen breaks. That is called fracture point. Now, on this straight portion, which is drawing from origin to yield point, you need to draw, find the slope of this line, that is sigma and epsilon. This will give me the Young's modulus of the mild steel. That is, stress, whatever is there, divided into the corresponding strain. You have to use proper scale uh, on x axis and y axis, then find out the Young's modulus of the material. This is what is to be done, and today I am very happy to. I uh, introduce my colleagues. Today's coordination is done by Dr. S. L. Gumbi, myself, Professor G. M. Maran Hooker, Professor Yogita Goga, Professor Pravit Mirji, Professor Pratik Fitness, and our non teaching staff, Mr. Kam Shetty Viji, is helping us in conducting this. Thank you very much. I love the universal testing machine because on this machine we can perform tensile test, compressor test, shear test as well as bending test. Today we are going to perform a tensile uh, tension test experiment on this machine. Uh, this is a specimen. The diameter of the specimen is 14 mm and the gauge length is 140 mm. And uh, this is the point where we are going to fix the specimen in between this jaws. And uh, this is the knobs. This, this is a knob to apply the load and this is a knob to release the load and on this, in this monitor we can see the graph of this load versus the cross section travel and from this when the load is applied we will be able to see all the points that is the yield point, elastic point, yield point and the ultimate stress and when the specimen breaks we will be able to see this specimen like this that is a cup and cone arrangement of this specimen is formed. From this we will be able to calculate the stresses at different point. Okay. After conducting the experiment we can see this graph that is the stress versus strain graph. We can see uh, from this point onwards uh, there is an increase in the load and after some point here it reaches the maximum stress. So this is called as the ultimate point. And at this point, we see that there is going to be the cup and cone arrangement where the uh, this this point is called as a fracture point. Uh, well, in this point, we see that uh, uh, there is the elastic limit. So this is the elastic region. In this elastic region, we'll be able to calculate the Young's modulus. Uh, that is, uh, we'll be able to calculate the ratio of stress by strain uh, by the slope. By the slope, we'll be able to find out this. So uh, this is a data where uh, we we'll, uh, by the conducted experiment we will be able to find out the peak point, the load at the peak point and the CHT travel and also the break point that is the fracture point, yield point and how much is the percentage elongation.